We're in here today, guys. Let's go and take a look at the new boat plans. Okay, so if you're new to the channel, in this latest series of videos, I've been building a quarter scale version of our boat design called Temptress. And what I've been doing here is using the exact same plans as the full size boat. I've shrunk everything down to quarter scale because that's as small as I could go without having to strip any of the detail out of the plans. Now, the idea behind that is that I can show you guys how to build the exact full size boat in the same way that you would uh, do it, but in quarter scale, so it fits upstairs on my mezzanine floor and kind of works in around everything else that I've got going on here with the business. So there's been a lot of people that said along the way that they'd also like to build one of these boats and I totally get that, it's a pretty cool project. But obviously I'm working from the full size boat plan so uh, cost of a fully developed boat plan for building a model at home, the two don't really tie up and correlate. So what I've decided to do is create a dedicated set of plans just for a quarter scale model. Anybody that wants to build one for RC or just to have a static model, it kind of makes sense to simplify things because this is almost far too detailed for somebody that just wants a model. It's pretty good for anybody that wants to do a test run for the full size build and um, we'll come to that in a bit. There's a slightly different set of plans for that as well. But I've worked on a completely redeveloped set of plans for the quarter scale model. And that's what we're looking at here. Let's take a look. So we've got exactly the same shape, dimensions, everything. Um, but basically what we've done is completely simplified everything. Everything is cut from six mil plywood, which makes things really straightforward. You've just got one material to CNC or laser cut. You can do it either way with this, um, this set of plans. And I've kind of um, drawn upon stuff that, uh, that I did right back when I was little making models. I did start out making model boats. So there's a little bit uh, in my distant memory of how that, uh, how that used to go together. So I've kind of followed similar practices with this thing and made things as simple as possible. So with this boat, you don't need a strong back setup like the one I'm using in the build series currently. You don't need the frame construction board because every frame is just a complete section cut from plywood. So let's start by taking a look at the stringers, I think, because we kind of start with the stringers. You can see instead of these being a laminated section like we're doing outside on the, uh, on the current build, these are just a single piece of six mil plywood. So the curvature's already cut into them, there's no need to curve any timber or anything like that. And these are also notched for every frame. So everything on this boat locates with a half housing joint, similar to the way that we did the, uh, the transom jig, um, just slot together with a simple half housing joint, makes for perfect alignment with stuff like this, really quick to put together. And if the joints are nice and tight fitting, everything squares up, it's um, definitely the way to go, I think. So that's what I've chosen for the majority of, uh, of this plan set. So you can see that the stringers notch into every frame. They've got a little cutout for each of those. And then if we look at a typical frame as well, let's go for frame eight. You can see that the frame is also notched for the stringer. So the two just fit over each other and uh, locate perfectly. So no need for a strong back at all. You can literally just slot these frames straight onto the stringers and um, you're gonna have one of these built in no time, a lot quicker than I'm doing that one out there, that's for sure. So we've got that, so that we start out by slotting all the frames onto the stringers. Okay, so then we'll, let's take a look at the keel. So the keel can go in next, and um, that is in three sections. So this is much the way that I used to do model boats when I was a lot younger than I am now. And um, the keel's three layers of six mil ply, and they fit together and they align on this inner face along here. So use the inside edge of these to align and all the slots as well. So the slots for each frame, they're cut in all three pieces. So you'll get a really positive alignment between those parts. And then you'll notice that the outer edge of these is a different profile. So there's, you've got two on the outside that are slightly smaller and then the one in the inside, which is larger. And this just indicates the bevel that you're gonna have to put onto this keel when you uh, before you put the bottom on the boat. So what that will do is actually follow the profiles of the bottom frames, if we take a look at that here, you can basically just see that if you follow that line up from the frame, 
you're going to cut through the corners of this uh, of this keel and end up with the correct bevel. So that just basically gives you an indication as to what that is, and it gives you a bit more landing surface for the uh, the bottom planking to land onto the keel as well. So you've got a nice amount of width there. So the three keel parts go together, and then they slot down onto the frames afterwards. So some of these frames will come down onto the stringers from the top and some of them will come up from the bottom. We'll see that illustrated in one of the drawings in a minute. Um, but the keel just comes up from the bottom so that will slot onto all frames from the same direction. And there's a couple of different notches at either end as well that just take you into various other components on the boat. So you can see we've got a forward deck stringer here that forms the shape of the foredeck and that just slots into, into the keel here. So you can see we've got a little half housing joint generated by the three layers there. And then we've got a similar thing back at the transom. You can see here that, that we've got a, a central beam in the transom and then that notches into a joint on our keel. So everything's really positively aligned it's going to be really quick and easy to get everything in the right place. You won't need to measure anything on this. It's literally going to be a slot together jigsaw piece. Nice and easy. So let's take a bit more of a look at the transom then. So the transom kind of adopts half of the, uh, the bits that we've seen already on the, on the boat that I'm building out there and half of uh, kind of new stuff. So it's got this assembly on the inside of the transom now, which is a little bit similar to the jig that we use to form the curvature of the transom. That basically is just made up of these um, these bows that um, create the curvature in the uh, in the transom, and then these vertical beams which slot in as well. And again, this is all just done with half housing joints. So if we take a look at that, you can see that that's notched to fit into the bow, so that this will just slot together into a grid section. And then what you can do is um, just curve this frame this uh, transom framing to match the face of that structure behind it and that's notched in places as well to, to sit correctly and then these beams here, these bows just um, sit on the back face of that transom frame. So that helps you to get that in place and then that locates again as I said with that joint into the keel and then also into the stringers as well so we turn those back on you can see that the stringers have cutouts that uh, fit into the framing there and then they also notch into this lower transom bow with another half housing joint so really nice positive alignment of all the parts we also have a another deck stringer on the the aft deck so what i've done here is i've i've replaced a lot of the uh, the battens that form position of things with these notched um, plywood cut stringer so that can just help you to align stuff quickly as I say not really any need to measure anything on this boat everything's going to be positioned with a stringer which is notched in this form so we've got stringers on the deck and you can see that they're notched to locate the um, the transom so go into that again central beam of the transom and then they also go into some of the elements of the deck that are not really tied to anything else so we've got these deck beams that run on the um, the aft and forward end of the engine hatches so you can position those using that stringer and the same on the foredeck as well we've got this little uh, beam here which forms the back end of the dashboard so again that is positioned within the boat on the forward deck stringer so that's going to get our framing done really nice and quickly but i'll be quite interested to see if a couple of you guys start to build this it'd be really nice to see just how quickly this can go together because i think in a weekend you're probably gonna have this boat completely framed and that would be um a lot quicker than i'm doing it so the chines again very similar process we haven't looked at the chines yet on the uh, on the one that i'm working on but the chines are going to be one big piece of again six mil plywood and this uh, chine flat arrangement so this is going to be cut from plywood and then it's topped and bottomed by a timber which you'll put in afterwards. So the chine flat will sit into place and that's just one complete piece. When we do that on the boat that I'm working on, you'll see it's all done in layers and the curvature sprung in and it's a massive laminated assembly. It's a really uh, clever design by Michelle, that one. So looking forward to doing that. We'll do that in the next video.
there we go. That is about the sum of our CNC cut parts. From there on, once you've got the boat completely framed, it's going to be just a case of cutting in the notches for the top side battens and you'll spring some little timbers into place for that. And then you can get on to, um, to skinning the boat. So despite the fact this is a model, this is going to have to be cold molded really, this boat, because of the curvature that is in the, the bottom and the sides of this boat. I don't think you'd be able to do it with just a straightforward plywood skin. So it's going to have to be uh, cold molded with strips of diagonal planking. It can be done with ply, but you'd have to cut it into, uh, into thin strips. And we'll see that. That's going to be a little bit further down the line on my build, but we'll get there eventually. So that is how the model differs from the one that I'm working from. Pretty much, well, obviously based on exactly the same boat, but just massively simplified. A lot of the jointing and stuff has gotten rid of and things are just kind of stuck together. So you've got whole frames there. So let's take a look at what you actually get with the plan sets. So there's two step models. I'm very much a believer in providing 3D models with um, all of my boat plans because we've got the boat 3D modeled, you may as well have a 3D model of it because if you've got even just a basic viewer, you can look around the boat in a, in a program such as this and you can see where everything locates. It's just a, such a visual clear way for you to see how things fit together, where things go, and even take measurements from things if you, uh, if you need to. I think in this day and age, you've got to be doing stuff like this. It's going to make things so much easier for people. And um, there's a limitation of what you can clearly show within drawing files and things like that. 3D model just shows you everything as it, as it uh, should be. So you get a 3D model like this, which is the um, boat assembly all together, um, all the framing and the uh, buttons as they should be. And then you also get an exploded version. So what I've done here is I've just blown everything out and it's all blown out in the direction that it gets installed on the boat. So you can see what we were talking about here where we've got certain frames that come down onto the stringers from the top and then certain frames that come up into the stringers from the bottom. And you can see that illustrated in the way that this is exploded and then the keel comes up from the bottom. Again you can see the way that that is done. You can see the transom framing here so as that's opened up you've got all your vertical beams and your horizontal bows and then your frame sprung in as well. And then you can see top side buttons, shear clamps and then the carlins and deck buttons. You can also see our forward and aft deck stringers. So you also get a 3D model of that so you can look around that in a, in a nice visual way. And then let's take a look at the parts. So as with all of my boat plans everything comes in DXFs so that you can drop it into pretty much any software for laser cutting, for CNC cutting. It should work with most stuff. If anybody is in the process of building one of these and you need a different file format, um, just drop me an email, let me know. I can do a conversion on that. I can ping you over a different file if you need something different for the software that you are working on. So we go with the DXF for now um, and down in the bottom right hand corner of this, you've got the dimensions of the bounding box. So I always put stuff within a rectangular box just so that people can size it. When you're pulling it into the software, the first thing you want to do is just highlight everything there, go up into your properties or whatever gives you the dimensions within your software and check that that bounding box is matching the dimension that's down in that bottom right hand corner. Once you've done that, you know that everything within that box is in scale and in proportion and then you can start doing whatever you like with it. You can re-nest it. I've kind of loosely nested these. Um, you might want to re-nest them based on if you've got a different size machine and you've got to cut stuff on a smaller bed or um, if you've got different stock, things like that, um, you can re-nest the parts easily. So they're all in layers as well. So the bounding box is on one layer and then the profiles layer has everything named for its, uh, for its part. So you can see what everything is and you know what you're looking at rather than just a bunch of shapes. So that's our DXFs. Then we've got a drawings file as well. Very similar again to the full size plans, but this is obviously a much more stripped back version, a lot more basic, but just kind of gives you a little walkthrough of what you need. So we've got a nice little cover page that just shows you what the boat looks like from all different angles. Then we have the exploded assembly. So this shows you how everything comes together, generated from the 3D model that we've just looked at that's exploded. So if you don't have software to be able to view a 3D model, 
you can probably get by with these drawings actually this still shows you enough of how everything slots together you don't necessarily need a, um, a 3d cad viewer but it will certainly help you out making things a lot clearer um, and i think with something like fusion 360 you can download a free trial so you could just download that play around with the model and see what's going on so this has got everything labeled you've got this um, table down the right hand side here that shows you what all the parts are and labels everything and then we've got a basic assembly sequence down the right hand side as well which just walks you through what goes where and in what order to apply things and um, how to put it together and then on the final page we've just got a, um, a view of it all together so you can see what it looks like there and again parts are labeled so that you can um, you can pick out and see what things are okay so all of the parts within this boat are CNC or laser cut from six mil plywood this is obviously a quarter scale boat, the same size as the one I'm building. So that's giving you a six foot boat. So if you wanna do something like an RC boat, that is quite a big beast. Um, the way that I've drawn this, because it's all designed for six mil ply, you can also scale it further. So if six, six foot boat, quarter scale is a little bit too big for you and that's pretty sizable. You can also shrink these plans by 50%. All you've got to do then is cut everything from three mil ply instead of six mil ply and all the notches will correspond and um, slot together uh, in exactly the same way. It's pretty clever that, isn't it? So you can either do a three foot boat at eighth scale or you can do a six foot boat at quarter scale. Either six mil or three mil plywood corresponding to which size you want. So hopefully that's gonna be a pretty good and straightforward set of plans for anybody that wants to build one of these just as a model and not the fully massively detailed version that I'm working on. Um, I am also going to make the fully detailed quarter scale plan sets available. What I'm going to do is bolt them onto the package for the full size boat. So what will happen is you will get the fully detailed full size boat plans and the scaled versions all within that group. My thinking behind that is that anybody who's going to want to build one of these in as much detail as I am out there, they're probably going to do it as a forerunner to build in the full size boat and therefore you're going to want the two plans that go together anyway. So when I've finished um, putting the files together for that one, they will be included with the full size plans. These ones are already done. They're ready to go and they're on the website now. So if you guys want to build one of these, head to the website, check out the plans on there. I'll put the link um, at the top of the video and in the description as well. And uh, let me know in the comments if you want to build one. If you're going to do one of these, I'd really like to see them all come together. I think you'll probably get this done way before I get that one done out there. Um, because it's a lot easier to put together. Um, so let me know what you think, guys. Hopefully, um, hopefully I've got everything worked out and the plans are, are a good set, nice and easy to use and um, really obtainable for a lot more people wanting to do this on a small scale. So hope you enjoyed the video and uh, next week we'll get working on the chines on the uh, my model outside. So um, cheers, guys. Catch you in the next one.